Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the Weddell Williams Model 44. This is a freeware plane available at flightsim.to by Sal1800. I'll put the link in the video description. And it was the winner of the Bedex Trophy three times. This is a cross-country uh, flight uh, race. And in some cases it was flown from Burbank to Cleveland. In other cases flown from New York to LA. So that would be the longer way because it'll be against the wind and everything. And also Cleveland is closer than New York too uh, when it comes to LA. Uh, one of the winners was Roscoe Turner's uh, version of the Weddell Williams Model 44. And that's the one I will be flying. Uh, Roscoe Turner was uh, quite a character. Had a pet lion, Gilmore. And I am only going to test it out to see whether this works or not. And I'm not going to do the full flight. From 1932, 1933, and 1934, this was the winner of the particular race. And Roscoe Turner went from New York to L.A. in 11 and a half hours. So one of the win win winners of the race was the Beechcraft Staggerwing, actually. And that would be an interesting thing to try with the variant of that that we have in here. Now... One interesting thing about this is um, it's got a 180 gallon tank, but that doesn't apparently leave any space for people. <laughs> uh, but I mean, of course we can still fly and all. The empty weight here is correct. And uh, Wikipedia says that the gross weight was 2,677 pounds. So we already have more leeway than that. But I'm just gonna type my weight in and we're gonna accept the fact that that's a little bit overweight and we'll see if it can take off with the full fuel load or not. It would need it, and in fact, uh, if we could take a look here, uh, it seems to indicate that we wouldn't get to LA like this. So let's see, I am going to try and take off with it and see how it goes. It is one of those tail draggers that has a really powerful engine in front. A little bit of uh, disagreement as to what engine. I mean, it's this definitely a Pratt & Whitney R1690. That's for sure. The problem is that Pratt & Whitney R1690s ran from 500 horsepower to 1,020 horsepower. And the description for this plane says that it, for the version that was downloaded from flightsim.to said 500 horsepower. So the base variant. Uh, but Wikipedia says 1,020 horsepower, which is very different. So... We will see. We will see what we get here. I assume that probably the lower horsepower rating would be more efficient. If you want a longer range flight, the lighter engine, and I presume that the one with less horsepower would be lighter, might be the better bet. Okay, so here we are. For freeware, this is a very nice cockpit, frankly. Um, I mean, it's not bad at all. Definitely promoting the pet. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it's like it, it sort of reminds you of a GB, right? It's sort of like the GB, except not quite as ridiculous. But I, I get the strange feeling I'm gonna have to be very careful about how I handle this on takeoff, right? Not quite centered. Oh, that's pretty smooth, actually. I'm not, not full throttle or anything, but that was very smooth. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's a breeze. It's a breeze. Yeah, there's Manhattan. Yep, just in our path, as a matter of fact. But yeah, it's accelerating pretty darn quickly. Sounds not bad. I mean, really, for freeware, I'm quite pleased. I mean, this is not an easy livery to make, either. I'm gonna keep the HUD instruments up because I get the feeling this would be an easy plane to go over speed with. Normally I'd have them off, but seems prudent in this case. Uh, buildings are creating some interesting effects up there, but anyway. Empire State Building. Oh, 
Alright, well, let's see what we can do about climbing and going fast at a higher altitude. My only criticism is it might be actually too easy to fly. I was expecting it to be harder. I would expect, you know, more need for rudder trim or something. It, it, it does need a little bit, I think. And I don't know if we have a rudder trim, actually. It does have some tendency to one side, but not as bad as it could have. I guess the Gilmore Red Line was named after this Gilmore Oil Company. I only knew about the line, I didn't know about the oil company. This is sort of a nifty plane, you know, you got the wires, it's got a nice sort of profile to it. It's more aesthetically pleasing than a GB, the GB has got craziness. The only thing is I feel like the vertical stabilizer is a little bit too small, but... One thing I'd like, uh, I guess they didn't have one in here, would have been uh, art artificial horizon of some kind, especially when we're in the midst of clouds here. I guess the compass sort of, this compass sort of acts like uh, artificial horizon, so that's not too bad. Yeah, the way they navigate was would be by compass and dead reckoning using a stopwatch but and then of course there's just taking a look at sites outside if we can see them I don't think it was meant to fly too high it wasn't pressurized or anything service ceiling 14,000 feet the interesting thing about the Vedic's trophy results is that the eastward bound ones the ones that benefit from the wind and everything were actually shorter they were from Burbank to Cleveland or Los Angeles to Cleveland. They weren't all the way across the country. Whereas the ones that were westward bound, which would be going against the wind and would be really fighting against things and taking longer, were all the way from New York to LA. And I have no idea why they made this decision. But as a result, the eastward bound ones were not only quicker because they had the benefit of the wind, but they were quicker because it was shorter. So they tended to be eight, nine hours long. Whereas the westward bound ones, uh, including Roscoe Turner's uh, in 1933, that was 11 hours and 30 minutes. And then there was another westward bound one in 1936, that by Louise Thadden and Blanche Noyes in the Beechcraft Staggerwing. And that was 14 hours and 55 minutes. So probably the, the conditions for that one were rather severe. Uh, it's possible that there, there wasn't any particular no, no, non-stop rule though. After World War II uh, it tended to be just military pilots doing this in military jets so the uh, P-80, the F-84, F-86, F-100 and so forth. So it was no longer a civilian thing. In fact, uh, astronaut uh, Dick Gordon one in 1961 with uh, co-pilot Bobby Young and that was in an F-4 Phantom. The year after that was uh, especially egregious. Uh, the, the winner was a B-58 Hustler for heaven's sakes. Made the trip from LA to New York in two hours. Which I guess they were allowed to go past the sound barrier uh, for that one overland. Same with the F-4, incidentally. That was the F-4 one with Dick Gordon in 1961 was 2 hours and 47 minutes. Dick Gordon was the command module pilot on Apollo 12. Well, right now our ground speed is a mere 216 knots. We're, we're up here, but there's scant difference between our indicated airspeed and the ground speed. And we're not going to be able to get too much higher than this, so... It would be a long flight here, though, you know, we've used 5% of our propellant. I, I really don't know how fast we're using propellant. That's not our fuel. There's no measure of that. There is, uh, I thought there was supposed to be a fuel indicator. I forget. 
Oh, apparently um, there's this tube behind the compass that's supposed to be the fuel indicator. But we'll only see the line when there's only 70 gallons remaining. It's a 180 gallon tank. Fuel burn in cruise. The mod says is 30 gallons per hour, which means only six hours. At this speed, we're not gonna get very far. That's for sure. What I will do is head to Wilkes Bar. I think seems like a good place to land. So I'm gonna bring it down. Oh, uh, clicking the face of the watch toggles mode, and now we have the stopwatch. Okay, so now it's in stopwatch mode. So yes, we can have a proper stopwatch there. I'm just reading through the details here. Well, weather conditions are not great right now. I can't see a darn thing. And we are currently getting closer to the ground, or trying to. Okay, now we can see the landscape properly. But I have deviated from where I was supposed to be going. Alright, well the weather has cleared up a bit now and we are still headed into Wilkes Bar. Uh, KAVP is where I'm headed to. This doesn't have any sort of nav instruments, like I said. Basically, you just need to look at visual aids and... Well, of course, we can have GPS and we've got the VFR map and we've got all that business too. But otherwise, if we weren't cheating, and we are cheating, um, we would just use the compass and the stopwatch and visual aids. The airport should be over here somewhere. Ah, I see some lights there. Well, let's see, I'm gonna have to lift myself up a bit. Maybe hit my head over on the ceiling here to get a good look at it. It's a lot plain in front of me. There is this convenient bar right in the way. Well, of course, track IR or something like that would be able to allow me to bend one side or another easily without trying to reach for the keyboard. I don't think this thing has flaps. Sure didn't see a flap lever. I just tried the flaps and nothing happened that would indicate that flaps were a thing. Not entirely sure what the stall speed is, but we'll see. Practically every time I land with a tail dragger of significant power, I bounce a lot. Uh, not so much with this one. Uh, maybe some mild lack of friction. Uh, I'm not eager to try the brakes. But, uh, uh, I don't know where I'm going. I'm gonna go off here. Oh, okay, we stopped. Well, alright, I'm gonna just taxi it over here somewhere. So yeah, that has been the Weddell Williams Model 44. And again, I'll link it in the video description. Not bad, I mean, for freeware, very good. And uh, easy to fly, and again, maybe the only... Uh, only issue with it is that it might be too easy to fly, but other than that, you can try and see if you can match some of those records. Could be interesting. Anyway, 
With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.